it's a very difficult situation so i plead for you guys that don't think it it cannot happen to you this could be your daughter it could be your sister it could be your cousin it could be it could be anyone so i am currently doing whatever i can to locate my daughter and to bring her home safe and sound and to share awareness to make sure that parents are aware that this is not just a movie it's not just i mean this is real alice navarro went missing on september 15 2019 from her glendale arizona home her mother jessica nunez has been alicia's voice and advocate to bring alicia home Alicia Navarro's story was recently featured on the Tamron Hall Show, The Vanish Podcast, and in major crime YouTube channels such as Danielle Hallen. Today, we interview Jessica Nunez, Alicia Navarro's mother. We also want to credit Chris Arteaga, a film student. Mr. Arteaga has a YouTube channel. When I asked him to use some of his footage, he gracefully gave us permission. His hope was to get this going viral, so we will do our best to share the information, all relevant information about what we're seeing, and the interviews will be on the description box. I saw my daughter it was through these stairs and she talked to me and told me, Mom, what are you doing still awake? It's late. Um, you know, and I told her I'm waiting for my husband, um, Yvonne, to come home from work. So then she said that, oh, if you don't sleep, you're going to get in a bad mood. And she went back upstairs. Um, I was laying down in the sofa watching TV. In the morning when I woke up, I have two small dogs, which I usually take out, you know, uh, to the restroom. And I walk through here, through the kitchen. And I noticed this door was semi-open like this. For me, it was awkward because, you know, um, what would be the door open so early in the morning? But I thought maybe my husband forgot it or since he was in the living room, forgot to close it. I didn't think too much of it. There was more than, I don't know how she stacked them up because there were like more. Like, I don't think she thought because the low one was like up here. And this was, was like up here and another one. Like, I, I don't think she, you know what I mean? <laughs> there were like, like, there was like four chairs here accumulated like that. So I don't understand. When she jumped, you could, there were like her. Her shoe prints were going towards this direction. That's why I know she jumped from here. And there was a shovel accumulated like that. These bricks were over here more. We, you know, it cleaned up, it's been a year. But she jumped through here and I believe she used this, you know, to jump like this. Oh, sorry, to the other side. Um, because that's where the footprints were going towards there. Um, unfortunately, there's gravel on the other side, so it's hard to know what direction she went because it's rocks. There is no, there is no um, prints from there, you know, to see if she went that way or this way. But that's her room. Here's a more clear picture there. So she just recently started high school. They did like a school project where they had to uh, introduce themselves and speak a little bit about themselves. And what she described herself has is a quiet, odd, nervous, weird, introverted, different, and nerdy. Her past, there is a picture of her when she was a baby. Present is a picture of her uh, which she took around July. That picture is the one that you mostly see in her um, 
missing posters, which is this one. And um, her future, she did see herself going to uh, GSU, um, owning a house, and there's a businessman there, so I'm assuming some kind of career. This was one of her favorite shirts. I remember she used to bite her shirts a lot because of her anxiety. So a lot of her shirts had had these little, um, you know, rips on them. I remember when she bought this sweater because of this drama. It's one of her favorite sweaters. And here's another one because again she liked a lot of outer outer space stuff and astronomy. Um, when she left, this was one of her favorite jumpers. She always wore this jumper. So I know that if she was planning to be away long, she would have took it because she was always wearing this jumper. And when she left, I know the clothes that she has because she was really limited. Um, like she only liked a few clothes. She was wearing a jumper similar to this. It was a, a, a washed, blue washed white um, jean jumper. So it's just some of her school clothes. I still have some of her dirty clothes here that I haven't washed. As you can see, you know, they have small rips because I just sometimes come and I smell them and I feel them because they still have her scent. Like her school clothes and her um, skirt. So all this is dirty clothes that I haven't washed. Um, one of her favorite shoes were van Vans, so she will always wear these Vans. The ones that she left with was um, the old school high tops, black and white ones. So she left all her shoes. She only took one pair of shoes. Uh, she did have two backpacks. What was like this, a black one? So the backpack that she took is a small one like this, a black one. I don't think she could have taken a lot, you know, because that's the only thing that's missing. Um, when she was smaller, she would play with dinosaurs a lot. Um, she would collect all these dinosaurs and she would play with them and the rocks. So I still have those there. Um, I, don't know, I think that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't know what else to say, I'm sorry. In 2019 alone, there were more than 420,000 reports of missing children, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And finding them has gotten even harder because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So people are wearing masks and it's difficult to recognize a missing child. Okay, I think we should stop, Jasmine. And it hurts. Please massage me. <laughs> I can't! Look at him! I can't do this! What we need from the public on this is to keep her face out there. To keep Alicia's story alive. To keep her image so everybody can see it. Hey there, rabbits and bunnies. We wanted to, first of all, thank Miss Jessica Nunez, who is Alicia Navarro's mom, um, and really just wanted to bring her on. You know, she gracefully uh, agreed to uh, really to continue and bring awareness to the disappearance of Alicia Navarro. I, first of all, thank you so much for agreeing to be with us. Um, and I really, I wanted to highlight how much, how relevant the information is that's already out there, right? So I do not, and I want to be respectful of your time, but also don't want to put more stress into you because I feel like you and your family have been through a lot um, in the last couple of years. You had highlighted a little bit of the time frame. 
since Alicia has been missing. Can you let us know exactly where are we at right now um, in the time frame that she's been gone? Um, it has been a year and six months. Okay. So uh, March 15th of 2021, um, pass oh of that day, it has been a year and six months. And it's really kind of been right in the center of, of COVID, right? So I'm assuming that yes. that has probably been a barrier in trying to search her go for leads. Okay. Unfortunately, yes, not just with sighting wise but also with restrictions uh certain businesses law you know law enforcement so unfortunately it has been a big big barrier okay. um do you how, how would you say that um alicia's siblings because she has siblings um and i think that that's something that you and your family have really um, been mindful of right they probably don't want to be on camera in the media or anything respectfully but how have, how have her siblings been dealing with all of this? What 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 would you say about this? Um, it has been very very sad and stressful. I try not to get my family involved in media. As it is myself, as her mother, it's really difficult. Um, I'm a really private you know person, and and just me doing videos and being out there, it's it's difficult. But as a mother, I will do whatever I can to locate my daughter. Um, her older sibling um, is was really, really close to her, so it has affected her tremendously um, in her everyday activities and, and whatnot. Um, the smaller siblings as well, because I'm not the same mother, you know, uh, they depend on me, they're smaller. And... Um, you know, when they see me crying, I when I'm out there doing whatever I can to show awareness, it, it's just it's just very, very um, depressing. And they pray for her sister. Um, they did a a letter activity, you know, uh, saying we miss you, Alicia. It's it, it's just has been very, very, very sad. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would imagine, I think that um, that is, we've seen you kind of be the, the face of advocacy for Alicia, right? That, right. you know, you are, you're, you're on TikTok, you're out there, right? And I think a lot of us um, in, you know, especially on YouTube platforms or social media or whatever media that we use, um, for me, that called a lot of attention in your advocacy and making sure that your daughter's name is out there that her siblings know, you know, that, that we're all dealing with this together, but mom's taking, mom's taking the lead on this. Um, so I think that that's been amazing to kind of see that, but also very much heartbreaking, right. As a viewer, um, if something could be done different, um, from her investigation, from when she first went missing, what would that be? You and I had an offline conversation just to give a little context of where this question is coming from. Um, I know myself, you know, the, our channel, The Rabbits, we've been very much trying to figure out the Amber Alert, you know, the things that, the steps that need to be taken, you know, when police go out there and investigate. So my question to you um, is, if something could be done different from the investigation time, what would that be? I believe that um, it should have not been taken as a runaway. Um, even though the letter is there and like I was told, you know, that 90% um, of runaways come back. Um, I believe they should take in consideration the background. I also believe that there needs to be more communication with law enforcement. Um, and there's still, I'm not, you know, in any way bashing law enforcement. I respect them and, and you know, um, but I believe that there has to be more communication on missing faces, not just one time and that's it. There has to be a constant reminder that, you know, um, the the, per the child is still missing, you know, she's still missing, it's been this long. Um, I believe that uh, the changes that should be made is that I don't think each runaway should be, um, each runaway should just say that they're coming back. 
you know mm-hmm. uh, there's no guarantee of that their intentions are to come back but not all of them do so i believe it should be taken a little bit more seriously um even though like i was told 90 some percent of runaways come back but that's mm-hmm. not always the case there is danger out there um just alone them being alone um I also believe there needs to be more communication on uh, missing. For example, um, we live. I live in Arizona, so we're in the border state. Yes. Um, I believe there has, you know, there there should be more communication with our partner states, letting them know what's going on. There's a missing child. Um, just more awareness on that behalf. I believe that that was not enough okay, mm-hmm. um, at the beginning, because. I believe the the first days of this are cru- crucial. I mean, there's information out there. They, there shouldn't be a, a time period of waiting to be investigated. So um, I also believe that me as a parent, unfortunately, I wish I knew what I knew now from the beginning. Um, I wish I knew about organizations. Um, you know, since the beginning, um, since the next day or the, the same day, I I planned a um, flyer distribution, which was on her birthday, a couple of days afterwards, actually. And um, I wasted no time in, in doing what I thought, you know, was best by passing out flyers and, and, and trying to locate her. Um, mm-hmm. So... I just believe that it should be, you know, it, it should be taken a little bit more seriously when um, when the minor leaves home. For sure. Jessica, have you been offered any, or have you met any uh, support groups or um, other parents, you know, other adults that have had? similar situations as yours um has anyone offered you any type of support um in in this area because i would imagine that this would be a huge weight for you right to to carry in and and as the leader right as that matriarch of this of this family of your family have you been offered anything to kind of help of course um i have received lots of local community uh support there's organizations that um have parents um, they're not in state that mm-hmm. communicate that were in similar situations. Um, I don't have constant communication with them, but um, that is available. Okay. Um, most of all, I believe um, I also have international community support of, of, of people that are not in the United States that are going through what I'm going through. So um, I am blessed. I am very blessed that I do have very supportive um uh, persons that I I've met and and continue to support me even though it's been so long um, mm-hmm. yeah how would you you know you had a recent GoFundMe raised you know to put a billboard in um, can you tell me what areas exactly the billboards at I, I saw that being kind of recent thing that that you, you were able to organize people kind of pitched in to help out a, a place a billboard uh, was it in Mexico? Was it in Mexico? Was it, where was it exactly that it was placed? The first billboards were placed um, that I paid for was in Las Vegas, and there mm-hmm. were 10 digital billboards that was for 30 days. After that, um, there was one in, in Sonora. There, there's two in Mexico at the moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. And with, with that, what led you guys to kind of place them in those locations? Was that very strategic? Was that just like, we believe that these are some of the sightings that she might be at? No, um, the Vegas is because it's a close state that mm-hmm. is actually in Arizona. Um, my goal is to continue to partner states as soon as I'm able to raise more funding. Um, it, it just happened to be Las Vegas because that's a really active city. Mm-hmm. And um, that's something that I I, I think it was best. Uh, regarding Mexico, we again we are in Arizona, so we are close to the border, hours away, and um, I'm not you know gonna. I don't know. I just you know you never know. Uh, mm-hmm. We're close to Mexico, and uh, she might be there. 
um, there is no particular reason or, or, or leads that, that got me to put these billboards there. It's just something that I do randomly. Perfect. And so then you're still accepting funds for the billboards actively in that GoFundMe account. Can we still, like if I have some some viewers that want to donate, are you still accepting donations to do that? Yes, business? of course. I really will appreciate that. I did put a goal of 2000 because I'm not really too good at that. But um, those funds that were there actually already were exhausted in those three locations. Mm -hmm. And I will appreciate any support, of course. Thank you for, for that. Yeah, I'll definitely make sure that I link um, that information into the description. You know, again, whatever we can do to kind of keep this message of bringing Alicia home um, going, whether it's through this platform or in other areas, that would be awesome. My my thought question, my question though, and, and also thought, right, is that if there was if there was a message that you could share with parents um, that you know have kids that go online that you know what what is it that, that that you feel like needs to be maybe learned from this experience um with kids online because i know that a lot of the story from Alita is there's a belief that she might have met someone that from online out there um that she did not willfully run away and if she said she was going to come back she was going to come back i truly believe that i still do so my my thought is what is it what message would you have to, to anyone that's a parent first of all um i will never imagine being in a situation my daughter went you know to the private schools i have done whatever i can um, to give her the best therapies um she was never out there, um, you know, she she hardly uh, went to friends' houses. Um, I never, ever thought that I would be in a situation like this. So, don't think that this might not happen to you. Um, my daughter was well taken care of. She didn't even take a city bus and I tried to encourage her to go out there with her friends to have outings because that was one of my goals for her social anxiety so i never imagined to be in this situation i never i never knew about this online predators about all the stuff that goes online i mean there's lots of things that i I don't even know how they're there, but you know, they're explained to me that most of the stuff is not regulated mm -hmm. and they're from outside the country. So I am asking you as parents to speak to your children. I think that should be, you know, even though I just speak to my child, I want you to realize that, you know, once we're teenagers, it, we all went through there and we can't 100% monitor their social media. It's impossible. I don't care. You know, they tell me, oh, my daughter doesn't do this. My daughter does not. It, it, I, I used to monitor, but I was not aware of a lot of things that were go going on. You know, of all these people she was talking to. For some reason, I, I couldn't, I didn't see that. You know, um, there's ways of them to um, hide that stuff. So I would just, you know, advise for you to speak with your kids, um, give examples, because my daughter's story is not the only one out there. Unfortunately, there's a lot of missing children. And to try to monitor their social media as best as you can. Um, because again, I never thought that I would be in this situation. and. And I, I don't desire anyone to be in a situation at all. It's a very painful, painful situation, not knowing where your, your children, you know, where my daughter is and my situation is. Mm -hmm. Is she being taken care of? Is she eating? 
are they taking any consideration her you know her her diagnosis it, it, it's just it's a very difficult situation so i plead for you guys that don't think it it cannot happen to you this could be your daughter it could be your sister it could be your cousin it could be it could be anyone so i am currently doing whatever i can to locate my daughter and to bring her home safe and sound and to share awareness to make sure that parents are aware that this is not just a movie it's not just i mean this is real yeah i really wanted to validate a point that you said you know between the social media it is a very hard thing it it, it has become considerably harder to monitor the online activity um it, for for kids in general right so this isn't about what you want to do different right i think that everyone can go through a situation like this um so i wanted to make sure i validated you on that that you could do the best that you can and stuff will still happen right um and so in in Alicia wasn't without love, right? She uh, mm -hmm. she had therapy. She had a lot of stuff in place, right, to address, you know, her her autism, correct? Um, so it, it, private schools and all that other stuff. So I I very much uh, appreciate you saying that um, and clarifying that as well. If um, if Alicia was listening, okay, um, what would you say to her? if she just happens to find this, say that, you know, for whatever reason, she was able to, to hear a message from you and you've given so many messages, Jessica. Um, so I definitely want to be mindful of that, but if there was anything you could say to her, what would that be right now? Alisa, I love you. I miss you. I'm still waiting for what you swore to me in that letter you left me. I want you to know that there is nothing that you can do that can lessen my love for you. I love you. And I mean it with all my heart. I'm waiting for you with open arms. So please come home, please call me. And for that person that knows something or has her, I just want to make sure my daughter is okay, please. Please come forward. I'm asking you. <sighs> Thank you. Yes. Um, all this information about who to contact, uh, you know, where to call. Um, we will definitely put all this information in the description box. It's very important that number one, we help we help this mom out. We help a lot of you know people out, but also just the message that you know, Alicia, if you're listening, you know, whoever has their that they're aware that we're still thinking about her and that we still want her back and that this mom needs her daughter back. This family needs some answers. So we're hoping that someone will be brave enough. Um, Jessica, is anybody able to remain anonymous when they, if they have a tip or anything, yes. we're able to give that information out, correct? Yes, of course. Okay. So I'll make sure that all that information is in the description box. Jessica, um, we're going to be closing in now. Um, do you have anything else you want to share with us or tell us or anything? No, that is all. Thank you for, um, for your time. And